sitting comfortably. <laughs> then we'll begin. Um, okay, I'm just going to give just a, a very short thumbnail sketch of what each of the speakers covered, and then we'll just open the floor to questions. Um, and uh, it doesn't need any more explanation than that. Um, but to go from, from that, that down the road, um, EY Lee from the observatory gave us an introduction into um, how climate change will affect rainfall and water supply and the incidence of drought and flooding in Hong Kong. Beavis Mack from ACOM talked about some of the technology involved in, in managing and particularly cleaning our water. LT Marf, uh, director of the Water Services Department, gave us a very, very uh, frank overview of the state of water in Hong Kong. And finally, Carlos Lowe, Professor Carlos Lowe from PolyU, on issues of managing water quality, or oh, sorry, managing water and the, some of the disparities and the inequities in water along the, the basin of the Dongjiang. So, as I said, if you have any questions on climate and variations in water supply relating to climate, perhaps we'll start with those to give uh, BY Lee a chance to answer before he has to head off. But uh, BY, when you need to go, please, just, just, just make a runner with our thanks. <laughs> okay, questions? If you'd raise your hand so I can direct traffic. Yes, thank you. Mirror. Is it going? Is it? Yes. Uh, Miriam Pierce, a uh, question around climate change one there, just to understand the graph. Are you saying that predictions at the moment look as though, based on our average, we could have some years that we have half the rainfall, and other years double the number? Is that the full flexibility of what the predictions are? Yeah, uh, for, the, for the dry year, we expect that uh, half the amount of water, uh, four times this century. Uh, for wet year, uh, that could be uh, a little bit more than 50%. percent i say because the normal is uh, 2,400, and we expect uh, over over 3,000 uh, for wet years. So that uh, roughly like that. It's, we're talking about a big. So based on that, when we heard the number of four to six months storage capacity. What does that impact on based on what's coming in the pipe and what we can capture here for how many days or months or weeks we have of storage capacity in those low years? How much? Uh, I think the, the scenario has somewhat changed when we compare it with the 60s or 70s when we have drought and, and water rationing. Maybe LT is the mark. Well, maybe I can supplement on that one. Uh, basically, the local storage that we have can up to something like uh, 0.5 or 0.6 billion, all right? But every year, we actually take out from that reservoirs, those reservoirs, or use something of the order of 0.2 to 0.3 billion. So we do have a bit of reserve, in the sense that we're not using every drop in the reservoirs, mainly because we want to preserve the ecology inside the impounding vessels. And to, the other thing is to uh, reduce uh, the, the usage of chemical for the treatment process. Uh, but actually the answer to your question is on consideration of how much water Hong Kong takes from the Dongjiang. Perhaps that will provide uh, better pictures. We only take 3% of the annual flow from Dongjiang. So you can see the situation, as long as Dongjiang is pretty in a pretty form, then we should be okay, even if you're talking about a drop in the rainfall for a particular period. Uh, but it has to go with a certain price. I mentioned earlier on, Dongjiang is supporting four functions. One is water supply, the second one is electricity generation, the third one is navigation, the fourth one is, is maintaining the environment and the ecology around the river. Last year drop has uh, actually indicated to us uh, they may have to make some sacrifice in order to fulfill the need of water supply. What they did last year is cut down the uh, electricity generation. 
in order to supplement water flow uh, for water supplies. So it's a way of managing it. And in fact, uh, the Guangdong is doing uh, well the, quite a lot of measures over the years. Sometimes you heard about drought along Xijiang, that means the river supply in Guangzhou itself, and also Macau and Zhuhai. Sometimes you heard about the Northern River or in drought conditions. They actually swapping water around well, to, to handle that type of situations. So by, by our local storage, basically the maximum that you can go is uh, six months, right? But then well, when you talk about the drop, well, if you build the drop, hit the whole area, then well, the Guangdong has to use well, the, their means of uh, chopping the, well, the, uh, well, the water around and cut. Maybe the first one they cut would always be the electricity. But <laughs> at the moment, we are a bit lucky in a way. But basically, when you look at Guangxi, well, basically what happened in Guangxi in the past month, you have severe drop well, reported in April. And then, well, the, in, in the start of May, well, then you have flood, right? So, so basically, well, the, uh, as long as the thing is happening in that kind of fashion, well, then the Shenzhong, uh, uh, Shenzhong Jiang that's what the uh, place Carlos mentioned about, well, where people in Hall Yuan are saying that well, they have sacrificed quite a lot in providing a big storage. That vessel is, in fact, huge, mm -hmm. and that provides the regulation. Of course, for well, the Carlos at a valid point. Basically, somehow, well, the Guangdong province, together with all others, has to think a way of uh, helping both those areas. Okay, thank you for the question. Okay, I actually have one question for BY before he goes. And this is a new issue which I think is emerging, which is how melting of the glaciers may be affecting the southwest monsoon. I don't know, BY, if you have any any, any comments on on that issue or if this is an area that you look at? Uh, monsoon and glaciers, I, I think uh, glaciers are more related to temperature, the temperature rise. Uh, uh, monsoon, on the other hand, with, uh, if it is an active monsoon, then uh, we expect more rainfall. So, so for, for that year, particularly years, uh, we may get more, more snow flow, more snow flow and then more ice. But uh, over the long term, with the rise in temperature, uh, uh, the glaciers is going to continue to melt. Uh, one thing about climate change is that uh, uh, people estimate that even even if we stop uh, stop all electricity generation, all transport today, today we still have 0.5 degree increase in temperature because because of the carbon dioxide already in the atmosphere. And, and that carbon dioxide is going to stay for centuries. That's one thing. And the second thing, of course, uh, we talk about air pollution in Asia. And as government still work to clean up the air, uh, we get less particulates, we get less haze in the atmosphere, then we get uh, more solar in insulation, more solar radiation. And, and that could bring us another half a degree increase. So, adding that together, uh, we get one degree rise in temperature anyway. Anyway. And, and for Hong Kong, we already experienced 1.5 degree rise ever since we began recording uh, temperature in 1883. And, and adding that up, that will be 2.5. Already, already over the limit, uh, uh, the Europeans uh, are so scared about. Yeah, I remember hearing a talk by um, <coughs> BY's predecessor at Hong Kong, Hong Kong Observatory, CY Lam, who said that on its latitude, Hong Kong ought to be a desert, and that we are safe from that by the southwest monsoon, um, which basically hits the Bay of Bengal and comes around across Southeast Asia. And um, what um, my question was related to how to concern, some concerns coming from India that that monsoon is now less reliable and the likelihood of getting of continuing summer rainfall may be quite seriously threatened. And I think this is a, a new issue and not yet very well understood, but that is a, a very frightening prospect, I believe, in terms of supply of water in the longer term. So um, that, 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 that raises the concern. Um, I think it's probably um, time to say goodbye to BY. I think his limit was 11.5. <laughs> <laughs>